Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar, the channel where you can learn about new concepts in physics and astronomy. I'm your host, Dr. Robitaille. I look forward to discussing the thermal spectrum of the Sun, as it is the central solar observation and it is telling us that the photosphere has lattice structure. However, if I jump right into discussing this subject, I would be preaching, not teaching. If we want to understand the solar spectrum, then we have to discuss heat transfer and physics. We will begin simply and expand from there. Let's start with radiative heat transfer and Stewart's Law. Imagine an object interacting with incoming light at a single frequency in an otherwise empty universe. One of three things can happen. The object can absorb the light, reflect it, or allow it to pass through. Since these are the only three options, we can write a simple equation. Total incoming light equals absorbed light plus reflected light plus transmitted light. We can write this equation in another form by dividing both sides by the total incoming light. Absorptivity is the ratio of the absorbed light divided by the total incoming light. Reflectivity is the ratio of the reflected light over the total incoming light and transmissivity is the ratio of the transmitted light over the total incoming light. All of these, of course, assume a single frequency. Now we have a mathematical expression which includes all possible interactions of incoming light with matter. We can use symbols for each of the quantities in this expression as shorthand. Symbols like these often make math look difficult, but we will always have the definitions of each symbol on the screen. Note that if absorptivity equals 1, then reflectivity and transmissivity both must equal 0. If reflectivity equals 1, then absorptivity and transmissivity must equal 0. Note that in dealing with fully opaque objects, transmissivity must be 0 since opaque objects do not permit any light to pass through. Now if an object interacts with incoming light and does not change its temperature, it must be emitting as much energy as light as it had absorbed. Otherwise, its temperature would change. Therefore, in thermal equilibrium, we can also write that absorbed light equals emitted light. Once again, we can divide by the total light in the system and write that the absorptivity is equal to the emissivity. In 1858, Balford Stewart reached the same conclusion. The absorption of a plate equals its radiation and that for every description of heat. One could say that at thermal equilibrium and in absence of convection and conduction, the absorptivity of an object equals its emissivity. This principle became known as Stewart's Law. Intuitively, the idea makes sense. Once again, imagine an object suspended in an empty universe. The only way that its temperature could be increased would be by absorbing net photons from the universe. Conversely, its temperature would slowly drop if it emitted photons into the universe. However, if the amount of light received exactly matched the amount of light it emitted, then its temperature would not change. That is Stewart's Law. If you want more details about Stewart's Law, you can check out these two papers, which are also linked below. Interestingly, Stewart's Law preceded the work of another important scientist. In 1859, Kirchhoff formulated a law of thermal emission without giving Stewart credit for his advances a year earlier. This caused controversy in the scientific community. You can learn more about this in the paper just cited on the carbon particle. However, in the final analysis, only the law proposed by Stewart will end up being correct. Now back to objects and light. What kind of light does an object typically emit? The answer is usually complicated. We can plot the intensity of light emitted by an object as a function of its wavelengths. Most solid objects emit light in a continuous manner with no specific shape in the intensity curve. Gases, by contrast, emit over a narrow range of wavelengths called bands and they can often emit in several bands at once. If a gas is heated, the intensity of the bands can either decrease or increase depending on the type of gas and the pressures involved. The lesson here is that for typical objects, the intensity of light emission has no easily defined relationship with temperature. For example, if you heat objects, they can change from solids to liquids to gases and finally to plasmas. In each case, the type of light produced changes. I wrote on this topic in a paper entitled 
the little heat engine. Heat transfer in solids, liquids, and gases. It is one of my favorite works and easy to understand. In our next video, we will learn about black bodies and their unique thermal properties. In the meantime, I hope that you will continue to join me as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below. I'll see you soon on our next video.